So in this video, we will look at some of the different orders of birds. This is not an exhaustive list, but it is a large list. And so for this list, what I expect you to know is just to be able to match the name of the order with the kind of animal or the kind of bird, and then maybe a couple of facts about those birds. So the first one is order Struthianiformis. Most of these orders, or all the ones that we're looking at anyway, have that formis at the end, basically in the form of, and then Struthios is Latin for ostrich. This is in the form of ostriches. Most of them are that, um, basically that simple. Uh, ostriches are of Africa. They are the largest living birds, approximately two and a half meters tall, up to 135 kilograms. This is, you know, big, big birds. Their feet are only have two toes on them, as you can see, and they are of unequal size. And they're covered with pads, almost like, uh, I think, tire treads. And what does this allow them to do? This allows them to move very rapidly over the sandy ground that they live in. Ostriches are really cool because they, along with wildebeests and zebras, kind of form this um, triad of allies of this alliance against other like meat eater types like lions, and they all kind of help each other. That's just a side note, but that was cool. All right, uh, order... Dinoorthoformis, and these are kiwis, and a kiwi is a flightless bird. There are several extinct species of this um, group, but there are three living species. All of them live in New Zealand. They're about the size of a chicken. Um, they only have the mere vestiges of a wing, so they don't even have you know, like a penguin is flightless, but it has a wing. These guys don't even really have that at all. The most famous bird of their order is the moa, uh, which was also got about the size of an, it's the one on the right, about the size of an ostrich, about two meters at the shoulder. And these are extinct nowadays because we started going to New Zealand. Order answer formis. These are swans, geeks, geeks, geese, and ducks. The members of this order have broad bills, and they have, uh, if you like, look in their mouth. The edges of their bills have these filters on them so that they can like dip their mouths in the water, and the water come back out, and then whatever else they put in their mouth would stay in. Think of them as like filtering the water out. They don't need all that water. They have web feet. Um, and you can see here, their front toes are webbed. They have a large breastbone with a low keel. And so what this means is that their breastbone is a much longer bone and flatter. I mean, the only if the only example I could give you this, if you've ever like eaten duck before, you kind of get this where you, when you have a chicken, the chicken's more short where ducks have this longer breastbone. And the idea here is for fast, straight flight. Ducks are among the fastest uh, animals in the world. As far as flying in a straight, fast line, there are other birds that are much faster than ducks, but ducks fly very quickly in a straight line. There are about 162 species of ducks and geese and swan. Galliformis, everyone's favorite. These are quail and grouse, peasants, not peasants, pheasants, ptarmigan, turkeys, and of course the domestic chicken. These are chicken-like animals. They are ground nesting herbivores. Um, they have strong beaks and heavy feet. Chickens will eat just about anything. They'll eat ticks and bugs and that sort of thing, but they will also just eat grass. So uh, you don't have to feed. If you want really good eggs, then you should just let your chickens eat grass. Trust me, it's good. 
uh, worldwide distribution on these guys that, that uh, the uh, grouse there on the right is a famous member of this order. Sphinus, Sphinus These are penguins. <laughs> Should have practiced these pronunciations before I started making this video. These are webbed footed marine swimmers of the southern seas from Antarctica north to the Galapagos Islands. And that's about as far north as they go. So these are not North Pole animals. These are Southern Hemisphere only kinds of animals. You see a lot of them in South America, uh, like South Argentina, Chile, and then of course up to Galapagos, but there's not as common. And then a lot of them on the Antarctic coast, which is what you see that picture there on the on the right fascinating animals could spend a lot of time talking about them uh, they use their wings as paddles for swimming and they look like they're flying underwater very fast there are approximately 17 species of penguin i say approximately because who knows there may be some other ones there's a lot of penguins there pelicaniformis these are in the form of a pelican which would make sense. These are colonial birds, meaning that they form large colonies together and they are fish eaters exclusively. They have these uh, large throat pouch and that's for holding their prey. Uh, and so they can bring it back to the nest and they have all four toes in the front, as you can see here and in their, in their web. 65 species worldwide, uh, mostly found in the tropical regions, but can be found in other places as well. Next are the order Falconiformis, and these are things like eagles, hawks, falcons, and then the condors and buzzards, the ugly brood. I think on the right there you have a condor or some sort of vulture. A uh, very similar kind of thing. These are diurnal birds, meaning that they are um, active during the day, and they are birds of prey. Most of them have very strong flight, and they have very keen vision. Vision is where most of their brain power is spent, being able to see distances you and I can't even think about seeing. Large, curved, sharp talons, as you can see here. This guy's got some sharp talons, and it's just to grab their prey and to kill their prey and then carry their prey off, usually back to the nest and eat it, though they will sometimes just kill their prey and eat it right there in your front yard. And there's a, oh, I remember this picture surprises. This was the, uh, that's an osprey, this bird here, big, big uh, lake-based or coastal based uh, bird of prey and this osprey grabbed a shark out of the water that had a fish in its mouth so that osprey won't even know that when it gets back to its nest it will um, you know have double that is a one in a trillion kind of picture pretty cool Columniforus, these are doves and pigeons, and yes, everyone's favorite dodo bird. All of these have shorter necks, um, they have short legs, and a short slender bill, except for the dodo, of course. The flightless dodo was uh, home to the Mauritius Islands which are near Africa, and they became extinct in the late 17th century because of dogs and people. There are about 308 species of these guys worldwide, oftentimes seen as a symbol of you know peace, except for the dodo. Not, I guess the dodo is kind of the extinction poster child, really, though, and uh, when people think of extinct animals, they typically think of the dodo. Cytosiformis is this order. These are parrots and parakeets. These birds have a hinged and movable upper beak, which is 
pretty interesting. Uh, they have a fleshy kind of tongue. You've probably seen pictures of parrots with their uh, tongues out. And these birds do have some ability to mimic voices, but they're not talking. Don't think of them as necessarily talking, but they are smart. They are way up there among the smartest animals in the world as far as brain to body mass ratio and um, mostly found in the tropical regions of the earth. Next are the strigiformis, and these are owls. Owls are nocturnal predators. They have very large eyes, which makes sense to be able to see at night. Powerful beaks and feet. When we look at an owl, we don't think powerful beak, but in there is a very powerful kind of beak. Notice in uh, owls, both of their eyes are face forward and their claws are a little bit different. They have two in the hind and two in the front, which makes them a little bit different than other birds of prey. And uh, they also have flight or silent flight. So you can't hear one of these guys flying up on you. Worldwide distribution from the polar places to the tropics. Apodiformis. Um, think about apoda. That means like um, no feet, right? Well, these guys have feet, obviously, but they're very short hind legs, known for being being very small, rapid wing beat. Um, most and these are hummingbirds, by the way. Um, most species of hummingbirds are found in the tropics. However, there are 14 species found in the United States, only one of which is found in the eastern part of the country, and we are familiar with this: the ruby-throated hummingbird familiar to garages everywhere. Picaformis, these are woodpeckers and then toucan. It's, uh, there's some fruit loops there. So birds, these are these are birds with highly specialized bills. They have two toes in the front, two toes in the back. And this allows them to hang on to the side of the tree. The uh, woodpecker obviously is, its bill is for um pounding holes in the side of a tree. They do this to um, find insects that live in the trees. And some of them actually will store food in those holes as well. Uh, the largest woodpecker is the pileated woodpecker, which are found, we have these around here. They have this red um, kind of crest on their head. These are typically found in more mature forests because they need large trees. And some they need trees that are kind of rotting too. And there's like almost 400 species of these guys worldwide.